So how many red flags is too many? That's the question that Morgan needs to figure out. All right, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin. I'm Tarsha. This is Conversations with Crawleys, and we do conversations about faith, family, relationships, and we do recaps, reviews, and commentary on our favorite shows. This one is all about Ready to Love in Miami. Mm -hmm. So you know what to do by now. Look, and we're back taping. We're our computer's back. We're we're <laughs> back. <laughs> Just start. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> hit that subscribe. Hit the like. Request notifications. And share. And we'll see you in the comments. Look, we even got our flow kind of coming back. Well, because you just started like, we're back, we're back. We were live and y'all were loving it. Yes, and y'all like the live. So we're going to do some more lives at some point, but this one we recorded, if you couldn't tell. All right. Y'all know what to do. All right. So let's jump into it. We, last episode finished off with a cliffhanger. Supposedly. Mercedes and Sue Ann were up for elimination. We knew Sue Ann was going home. <clears throat> Advocate Sue is gone. Yep. Advocate Sue is gone. And the reason they said she blo she bloomed too late. She blossomed too late. Well, I think she was more focused on Blake. Yep. For the majority of the show. Yep. And we know when you're focused on one person, you tend to kind of end up being eliminated at some point, you know. Yep. So, she's gone. Uh, she's not ready to love. Blake said he's not sure about what's going to happen going forward in the process in the Im in immediately after it happened, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Mercedes is like, Phew. so uh, she says she's going to become more intentional. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so that's kind of where things were. Mm -hmm. Landon is kind of upset because as they go on the rest of the day now, Landon's a little upset because he feels that Morgan is avoiding him so that she doesn't irritate or make Tony angry. And I get, I get that. I think Landon is right. He shouldn't have to feel like she has to walk on eggshells and can't express her feelings towards him. Mm -hmm. And he's hurt by it. Yeah. And so he does bring it to her attention. Yep. So Andre then talks with Cynthia mm -hmm. and says that both are wifey material. Yeah. Um, and when I say both, I'm referring to the, his other connection with just Jeffrey. Uh, I, I, I would probably want to know what his definition of wifey True. material is because people have different definitions Absolutely. of wifey. So if he feels that and finds that either one of those ladies could be his wife, More power to I wish him well. Yeah. He says he's clear on Jeffrey, but Cynthia is still rising. Yeah, I think you should go ahead and let Cynthia go. Yeah. Jeffrey seems to be his type and will work well with and their relationship. She'll probably have no problem gifting him another child <laughs> so, or gifting him his child. His child. So I think he should allow Cynthia to kind of blossom mm -hmm. um, with Anthony because yeah. that's her other connection. Yes. Um, Andre, is it Andre? Yeah, Andre was talking with Mercedes, mm -hmm. telling her not to run or to run that she runs from what she's afraid of. Mm. Um, no, I'm sorry, not not Andre. It's, it's Anthony. I'm sorry. She was talking with Anthony. Was mm -hmm. talking with Mercedes because that they were they were a potential connection. And oh he's, yeah. He's like, yeah, you kind of run it from what you're afraid of, because she was basically like, you've got all of your life together. I'm still trying to figure stuff out. So she's like, I don't know if I would add anything to you. And he's like. Let me figure that out. <laughs> but I appreciate you bringing me that information. Yeah, it's kind of like she's just saying, I don't feel like we're a good match because you're further along. Mm -hmm. And I just don't feel like it's going to work out between us. Right. And so if she feels like she's not matching the same energy or where he is, then it's good for her to now go ahead and say, I'm a bow out because Mark Anthony is my strongest connection. Right now, and, mm -hmm. right now, that's that's it. That's all she yeah. has, and kind of go for there. Go go with Mark Anthony. Let me yes. say that, and then Anthony can focus more on Cynthia. Yes, um, and then Tony, pretty Tony, what they call him, was burning <laughs> food on the grill. No, oh yeah, because he the gas grill. He, was, he had to put the top down because he didn't know how to handle it. Yeah, he didn't. He can't handle fire. I was like, Listen. that is not your house. Well, yeah, I'm going to say. You, I'm He's a, not a cook. No. You can tell he can't cook. Mm -mm. He can't cook. No. Because there's something else that will be coming up pretty soon. Well, also, 
He don't cook. Yeah, he don't. Mm-mm. Um, so Anthony's top connection is Cynthia, mm-hmm. and they are talking. Mm-hmm. Full, mm-hmm. Nice connection. They're talking wedding. Because she, she, she's mentioning. She's just, right, she mentions the wedding. Right. She's like, you, so because we, we're going to be getting married. He's like, oh, we're going to be getting married? And they kiss. Yeah. She said, like, he was coming out like a model, <laughs> all wet and chocolatey. <laughs> Again, I think that's a good connection. I think so. I mean, they she says that they talk on a uh, deep level, a deeper level or whatever, mm-hmm. and that they're getting along really well, and she's opening up to him. And so I feel like they're compatible, you know? Mm-hmm. I think... What? No, I think they're, I think they're a good connection. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Um, Blake is like, ain't nothing here for me. Yeah, he's talking to the fellas. Right, he talks to the fellas. He's like, ain't nothing here for me. And you guys Morgan, are... Morgan, Morgan's not for me. She went off on me. I definitely ain't going Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's direction. So he's like, I'll talk to, to Tommy. Tommy and we're going to go from there, but I appreciate you guys. I'm leaving. Yep, he hops in the car <laughs> and rolls out. Which makes sense, because yeah. I was like, I'm surprised he didn't leave with her. Like, hey, Sue Ann, I'm following right behind you. Well, they, they did come in. They did come in separate cars, so we had to leave in separate cars. So didn't. Well, yeah, but at the same time, well, we don't know how they taped it or how far along was right. it. He could have very well been like, "Hold on, let me help you pack your bags." Right, because Let's they were sharing a room, fellas. right? Yeah. <laughs> in their bunk beds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bunk beds. <laughs> All right, um, and then Tommy sends a message mm-hmm. by courier because he's like, "I ain't coming back down to that." that mansion i'm not coming back down there <laughs> wherever island they were on so uh basically they do handcrafted scented candles for their connections was mm-hmm. the assignment mm-hmm. and once again tony burning stuff because he left the covering of it on while he turned it on so i was like okay this shows that you do not cook if you didn't you don't do a lot of stuff if yeah. you don't understand that you can't leave that on so it started burning tony probably the type of person that put plastic in the oven Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> he leave the plastic wrap on the lasagna while he's trying to cook it in the oven. That's Tony. Oh, no. um, so Morgan takes some time with Lyndon, mm-hmm. and she says that she's conflicted on his age and his lifestyle because mm-hmm. he's a little younger than her, mm-hmm. and he is DJ bartender. I forgot what. He's bartender. He, he's a manager of a bar. Yes, a nightlife, right? Right. She's like, she's still feeling him. He's like, look, I ain't here to fight. Mm-hmm. You, if you mm-hmm. want what you want, that's mm-hmm. what you want. Um, he's like, I'm not a child. Mm-hmm. He feels that she treated him some kind of way because she doesn't want to hurt Tony. And he was saying, Tony is not good for you. <clears throat> you see how he's acting. He's not good for you. He says he's controlling. And he says, are you sure? I think he was talking, to, I don't know if he was on the sidebar or what, but saying like, are you sure he can give you... <clears throat> Yeah, because here's the thing. She's because she's like he he can give me this, he can give me that. And remember, for Morgan, her trigger, if you will, her thing is that she wants to get married. That's her within primary a year. Thing. She wants to get married. She wants to get married and she and wants have to have kids because she's thirty eight. And so, I understand. Granted, I I do understand that right. that when you feel like th- these are the things that you're wanting to be a part of your life, and it seems like it's slipping away. Mm-hmm. You know, because it gets harder. Not that you can't. Right. It just gets harder. Right. You know, for your baby to be healthy and make sure you survive if you're talking about pregnancy and everything, mm-hmm. let alone um, going later in life and getting married. Oh, yeah. You know, but people yeah. do do both yeah. later in life. Right. Um, but she says she wants to give Tony time to fix things. And Linda's like, mm, okay. I hear you, but... And that's where he also asks her, he's like, can he provide you all the things that he's saying? And that's a great question because if he's able to provide that, the question that should be asked is what prevented him from providing it to before, right? I because if he's, I, I'm like this, if he's such a great catch, mm. right, mm. then someone <clears throat> should have caught before, in my opinion. I, I hear that, but we don't know because it takes two people, right? True. 
So we don't know what those relationships were like on the other side. True. Maybe they decide they don't want to stay with him for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, because you could say the same thing about Morgan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, I know why they not with Morgan. Because <laughs> they don't have like, no hair. Because they don't have no hair. They have to grow their hair back <laughs> every other month with her. Mm-hmm. So I think it's deciding, again, like Cynthia told her, you know, how a man treats you when they're angry determines mm-hmm. how they're going to, you know, yep. who they are. Yep. And I think she's just not listening because her because she wants something so bad that everything else is being blocked out. Well, and I'm not saying that she's lusting after Tony, but I'm going to use that word just as a oh. simpler word. I'm not going to say she's lusting. No, just but say her desires. Her desire. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Her desires yeah. or her needs, if you yeah. will, are causing her to overlook red flags. Right. And I think people do this all the time. That's how they end up in this cycle of the same type of toxic relationships, yep. right? Because your heart has a desire for something, but yet you keep picking the same people over and over again. Yeah. And when you have the opportunity to take a risk on something new, right? Mm-hmm. London would be something new um, in the sense of being younger. And being different. Yep. And being different. Yep. Linda's like, he's not buying that Morgan has not already made her decision. He's like, mm-hmm. she's just she's just dragging this out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when she leaves out, she breaks down knowing that she hurt Lyndon mm-hmm. and that Tony has made her look a certain way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Cynthia goes and talks with her and she, you know, Morgan starts to recap the, mm-hmm. the conversation with Lyndon. Mm-hmm. Um, and Cynthia asks, do the actions match up? Again. Is he consistent? Is <laughs> is what he's saying matching up with what he's doing? And it doesn't seem like it. Mm-mm. I mean, not from us. Now, granted, we don't get to see everything. Everything, right? We're only getting an edited version of what's being put True. out there. But if Cynthia's kind of like giving her those questions, that means there's something there. Yeah. You know? But then Tony's in the other room talking to Andre. Mark Anthony. No. Yeah, Mark Anthony. Mark Who's Anthony is the one who gives Tony the heads up. Oh, it was Mark Anthony. Oh, I yeah. thought it was Andre that no. he was talking Mark to. Anthony's like, hey, okay. bro, they in the room talking about you. Mm-hmm. And Tony is like, he's upset that she's crying over two men. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the reasons she's crying is you. <laughs> well, no, she. He's, he says, I know... She's crying because of um, of Lyndon. Lyndon, right, and him making him upset. And why is he? Why is she worried about his feel? Why is she worried she, about? She's also crying because of how he's made her look and how he's responded and how he's acted. So yes, she's crying over the fact of how she's making Lyndon or responding to Lyndon. But he's got a part to play in it. It's also him, in my opinion. Right, but he's not. He's not thinking it's his. <laughs> He's no, all on him. No, he's not. And so he, he supposedly is trying to go in there, right, and check on her. And and he's like, almost like being dismissive of her feelings, Yep. in my opinion. Yes. Being dismissive of her feelings. And she's like, really? Tony, I'm good. All right, bye. Yep. If you're not going to be here to really listen to what's going on, how am I feeling, then you don't need to be here. Exactly. Um, so then they're making the candles and they pa- start passing out candles. So Jeffrey created a scent called Biblical Husband for Andre. What that smells like? Is that like <laughs> frankincense, know. myrrh, and <laughs> dust? I mean, <laughs> dust. I don't know. <laughs> what does Biblical Husband smell like? I want to know. Uh, and, and, what does she mean by biblical husband? I don't know. I mean... Because it sounds good, but what do you mean by that? Right. We'll move on to Jeff. Oh, I did figure out who Jeffrey reminds me of. Keep, keep you know it moving. Me, okay, we'll, we'll keep, keep it moving. moving. We'll keep it moving. <laughs> Y'all just tell me which Muppet you think that she looks like. I don't even remember Muppets. If you remember, if you watch us and you're of age, you remember the Muppets. Age. I'm gonna just give you a hint: Doctor Teeth, <laughs> singer. Just let me know if y'all if that makes sense to y'all. All right, Mark Anthony makes a scent for Mercedes. Anthony makes one for Cynthia. Oh, and your boy Tony is passed out. Oh yeah, he's sleep. He passed out. He, he gone. <laughs> like I'm going to bed. 
I'm going to be it. I am not, I'm not participating. <laughs> I was like, I mean, he got the lights on. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so you just out with the lights on. You might have hit that henny a little too hard. <laughs> uh, Cynthia makes a scent for Anthony, and then she also made one for Andre. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, wait, we could do that? We, we, we could make two? <laughs> like, yeah, ain't no rules to this. But they said for everyone that for you... Your, for your partner, your, your significant other, your yeah, top choices. Your top like, choices. So... Cynthia's like, I got two right now. Now, Anthony wasn't like, uh, I thought we decided we were getting married. <laughs> right. Anthony was feeling some kind of way. <laughs> Andre made one for Cynthia, and then he also made one for Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. He didn't make one called Biblical Wife for Jeffrey. No, he did not. <laughs> he sure did. He, sure did. he, he said, was, was he the one that made one with, like, coffee? I'm not sure. One of them said, I'm making something with coffee because I, I want to wake up to you or something like that. Yeah, I don't know who that was. Yeah. All right. I don't, I don't know how a coffee candle would smell. It smell like roasted Folgers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you remember Folgers? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Maxwell House? Good to the last drop. <laughs> All right. Lyndon made one for Morgan, and then he put two wicks because he's like, two flames. <laughs> he said, but only light one of them. <laughs> and then Tony's candle was empty. Right. He didn't even get there. That's prophetic there, too. Hmm. All right. So, uh, Morgan and Tony do talk, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And Morgan asks, why should she choose Tony? Mm. And he says, you know, because we, we have the spiritual connection. Mm. We have a deeper connection. Mm. And she fell for it. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it's what she needed to hear. Nothing. There's nothing to say when someone is not listening. Or doesn't have discernment. Correct. And so you get to a point where you just want to stop talking. It's just like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, I'll be here afterwards. So if you, you're you going to go ahead and decide to choose who you're going to choose, there's nothing else to say. Nope. Um. So that's pretty much the end, I think, of the... The getaway. the getaway. Now, Tommy did tell them when he when he got there um, that it was going to be the woman's week. Yes. To choose. Yes. So they knew that when they were leaving that the they house, had to make a decision. Yes. So Blake meets Tommy and lets Tommy know that hey, I'm out. There's yeah, nothing here there's for nothing me. Else here. He does say that he learned to pay attention to how he communicates, mm -hmm. um, which I think is a good I think thing. It's a good thing. It's too. a good thing. Yeah. Um, especially because we saw some some bad what we what seemed to be bad communication with like Z yes. and with Janique. Yes. So the fact that he's learned that we'll see how that well we really won't see. We won't see. <laughs> hopefully that will work for him going forward, learning how to communicate communicate better. Yes. I think um, hopefully it is truly eye opening. Yes. And he changes his style. You know, if he's still dating, right? Now, as Sue Ann is his person, the way he communicates with her they obviously could, worked enough for them they to They could see. interrogate each other. <laughs> Put each other on the witness stand. <laughs> he, he, he from the security side, <laughs> her from the legal side. Oh, gosh. Um, Mercedes does go on a date with Mark Anthony, and they decide to play chess for a kiss. Mm-hmm. So there was really no consequences. It was, <laughs> if I win, you give me a kiss. If you win, I give you a kiss. Sounds like everybody was winning. Yep. And they played two truths and a lie, mm -hmm. which I, I used to train and facilitate mm -hmm. uh, in corporate. And mm -hmm. so, great game. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm going to give you all my two truths and a lie. Mm. You know them. Oh, I don't remember. But see if y'all, in fact, in the comments, let me know which one you think is my lie. All right. First truth, growing up, I had a cat named Fluffy. Number two, I had a pizza and a Coke with Jesus. And number three, I was recruited by the CIA coming out of high school. Those are my two truths and one lie. Tell me which one is the lie. All right. So anyway, they do their two truths and a lie. Mm -hmm. And uh, hers is that she is allergic to the skin of apples. That's a truth, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> It makes her lips itch or something. Yeah. And then Mark Anthony had sex in a library but didn't get caught. Mm -hmm. 
He says he's not looking to get married tomorrow, but he wants something serious. Which is right up her alley, in my opinion. Yeah, because that's... I, I think she feels like they could grow together. Yes. And, you know, hopefully maybe they... The, both of them may come to the conclusion that they're ready for marriage. Possibly. So, but I think they're a good fit. They, could be, they look like they might be a good fit. Well, I mean, to they, grow together. Right. They look like a good couple. Yes. So, I hope that Mark Anthony makes the decision that he'd rather go this route. Than Jeffrey. Than Jeffrey. Because I don't know if how well he feels comfortable taking on children, you know, yes. and everything that comes along and with potentially that. Potentially being gifted with another child. Correct. Yes. Um, so she says she has solidified her decision. Right. But I was concerned that she didn't share it with him. I would think that would. Yeah. I think if she would said, you know what? I've already talked to Anthony and I feel... Mark, Anthony, you're the best connection for me, and I'm putting that out there for you to know. Right. So I'm letting you know, and right. I know that you know. Right. I'm putting you on we notice. Know that right. you don't know this, right. and I know you. And so th- hopefully that will help him to make a clear decision. Like, right. oh, she's already decided. She's already picked me. Mm-hmm. There's no one else that she's in between as well. Right. Right. Um. So the ladies do have their meeting, mm-hmm. and Tommy lets them know that Blake is gone. Mm-hmm. And in true Jeffrey fashion, she says, it's a cop-out. I was like, what are you talking about? That didn't make sense to me. How is it a cop-out if he has no connection? And you don't like him anyway. So who was he going to stick around for? What is he copping out for? Because you're supposed to be looking for love. This is not a competition of who... Who can stay the longest. Right. Or take somebody's uh, partner or potential partner. So, yeah. It's not like, competition. That don't make no sense. Yeah, so I was just like, okay. Be glad Whatever. at your baby voice. <laughs> All right. Um, so then, you know, Tommy's like, okay, look, I pretty much know who y'all got connections mm-hmm. with. Let's talk about who you don't have connections You're with. You're not feeling. Uh, Mercedes says her and Andre not clicking. Mm-hmm. Morgan says Lyndon mm-hmm. and is, is kind of on the bottom for her. Mm-hmm. Cynthia says Lyndon and Tony. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tommy asks... How many red flags, Lyndon, Uh or Morgan, do you have Uh for Tony? Uh I know, but... Uh uh. And Cynthia, Cynthia, excuse me, she charms in as well, like, look, this is what happened over the weekend, Mm -hmm. Tommy, and how Tony was responding. Yeah. And Tommy looking like, uh, Morgan? He's like, do we need to step in? Like, um... You're going to have to make a decision. Yes. Who you're going to choose. And, you know, she gave cons for both men. Right. And so he's like, well, I'm going to let you talk to Lyndon. Your your, your decision. Is and whoever determines stays. Determines who's getting eliminated. Yep. Because we've already had Blake gone, so we don't necessarily have to remove another Correct. male today. But Correct. stop holding on to something that you're not really, really wanting to hold on to. Exactly. So they go on the date, Morgan and Linda. Mm-hmm. Um, and he says he feels like it's the final chapter. Mm-hmm. Um, he says Tony is manipulative. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, he says, but he also says, look, I'm not the man you need right now. Yeah, he said, I, I've thought about it. And what you're asking for, the time frame, this is what he said, the time frame right. of what you're lo- looking for. I can't provide because she's like, I got to be married. I got to have a kid. Yeah. And so he's like, nah. He's like, I know you, but I don't know you well enough to get married to you and have kids with within you. a year. And that's right. what he said. <laughs> right. He said within a year. So not for me to make that decision. He's like, you ain't got to tell me. I ain't ready to love in your fashion. <laughs> right. We, I'm good. So they kiss. He leaves. <laughs> right. Now this trailer for next week, though. Yeah, because they have to meet the parents. Remember our family, family members. members. And there is, it looks like the the uh, Tony with sister cousin I don't know uh, some woman in his family or what that he brings to the table with Morgan, and Morgan says something about counseling, and the friend is like, mm-mm, nah, mm-mm, I don't like that. Now could be editing, could be saying that she's saying that to something else. We'll see. We'll see. The other one that was interesting was um, Andre's family talking with Jeffrey and 
they were like, okay, you got three kids. That don't sound, you don't, you don't sound like you're an asset. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. And then there's a conversation also between Morgan and Tony and Morgan makes some assertion about something that happened with not- Natasha. We were like, wait, who's Natasha? But if you go back. Yeah, we had to go back. Yeah, we was like, we was on the own website. Like Nat- Natasha was the lawyer that was eliminated at the mixer. She was eliminated day one. Um, so interesting to see what that will be, uh, which means also that we are coming up on reunion time very soon. Mm-hmm. So that should be very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Let us know your predictions for who's together, who's still around. I think we solidified that basically it looks like Andre's going to be with Jeffrey, mm-hmm. Cynthia and Anthony, mm-hmm. Mercedes and Mark Anthony, mm-hmm. and Morgan and uh, Tony. Tony. That seems to be where it's going to be. I don't think they're going to eliminate anyone else from here. I think because those four have kind of congealed, Mm -hmm. they're going to leave that as that. Mm -hmm. They're not going to try and get down to three couples. It makes no sense to try and do that and have a couple eliminate just because. Um, So we'll see. Kind of let us know your thoughts, your comments, and we will see you all next time. Have a great one. Be blessed.